If there's been one big criticism of this current election campaign, it's that it's been boring. The race to the lodge so far has been a cheerless trudge. And the so-called great debate was about as stimulating as warm milk before bedtime. Someone needed to shake things up. Well, our guest reporter Mark Latham certainly managed to do that. But before you write him off as a bully and an attention seeker, remember Mr Latham has experienced an election campaign from the front line. He knows the inner machinations. Maybe that's why the major parties are so scared of him. It's going to be now I want to say something. Hang on, hang on. Julia. Hello, Mark. Long time How are no you? See. It's hard not to get caught up in the shenanigans of a federal election. Now, Tony, long time no see. It is a long time now, mate. Are you brave enough to shake my hand? Especially when Tony Abbott... I'm glad to hear it. No, no, no worries, You won't end up in hospital. But... And Julia Gillard's every move is so closely watched. Could I just ask you why the Labor Party's made a complaint about me working for Channel 9? Uh, I don't know anything about that, Mark. If you uh, want to work for Channel 9, that's a matter for you. Much has been made of my meeting with the Prime Minister. And mostly, I've been portrayed as the villain. There's no business like show business. Like no business. But what annoys the Labor Party is that I've upset the carefully staged managed event they wanted this election to be. Everything that traffic will This campaign has had all the tricks of the politicians' trade. That's pretty funny, aren't I? Yeah, thank you, Jim. Just ask those little babies who've been kissed and cuddled by middle-aged strangers at fake campaign events. This is James, and although he's very young, he can see through the spin and he's going to vote Liberal. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> There's one important thing missing from this election campaign, and that's substance. The problem is, politics is no longer about policy, no longer about making Australia a better place. It's about power, gaining it, and then keeping it at all costs. Now, I'm not the most popular bloke around here, but take it from me. I've seen it from the inside, I know what I'm talking about, and at the end of this story, I'll even tell you how I'm voting on Saturday. For those who don't remember, I was a Labor MP for 11 years, including 14 months as the leader of the opposition. There they are a conga line of suckholes on the conservative side of Australian politics. How are you, Mark? Good Good How are you? I'm very Hi. well. Good In 2004, I fought and lost an election against John Howard. After that, I left Canberra disillusioned and disappointed with the antics of the party machine. Well, I've decided to resign both as Labor leader and member for Werriwa. <laughs> Sadly, there's even more reason to be disappointed today. There's a lot of hot air, but not a, not a lot of real good promises. Yeah. Do you think it's got worse compared to past election campaigns? Yeah, definitely. This is the worst ever? Yeah. Prime Minister, I offer you my very warmest congratulations. From the moment Julia Gillard rolled Kevin Rudd to become our first female Prime Minister, she knew what her election plan would be. To move Australia forward. Moving forward. Moving forward with confidence. She didn't want a campaign on policy, just empty slogans. Move Australia forward to move forward. Moving forward. It's a trick both parties use. End the waste. Pay back the debt. To end the waste. To pay back the debt. Dumbing down politics and turning it into a beauty contest. On that now, Michelle, what do you know about The Labor Party is supposed to be full of reformist ideas. But in this election, they're following a small target strategy. Point out some of the exciting bits for us. Exactly the same as the Liberal Party. In fact, there's no real difference between them. <laughs> I think it's lackluster. Where is uh, Julia Gillard's vision for Australia? And uh, Tony Abbott's missing in action when it comes to vision. If we were really serious about this election, everyone, including the major parties, would be paying a lot more attention to this man. In all likelihood, Senator Bob Brown and his Green Party will control the next parliament. But you rarely see him on the nightly news. Oh, well, good luck with all of that. We are giving people an alternative. We're not a faction. We're not a lobby group. We're not a preference machine for the big parties. We are here to replace them because they're failing the Australian people. Do you think both party leaders have been duping the Australian people in this campaign, that they're not fair dinkum? I'm not sure that they're not fair dinkum, but I think they've lost their way in that they don't represent 
the broad public interest. It's unfair. It's, uh, it hits people who are... Uh, well, Bob's left pushing his policies. The tiny band it. of media stragglers left in Canberra. Oh. 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 Out on the hustings, the big two are followed by an army of reporters yeah. and photographers. They want to stay connected to the work. Well, so we, we, we have press conferences of 40 minutes or so, and I'm not sure if we've got a straight answer yet to anything. Well, there you are. Sure, there's a daily announcement or two, but much more important is the photo opportunity. Oh, that's my shoe. Oh, thank you. Oh. Hey guys, the advance team for Julia Gillard. Everything is carefully choreographed by the backroom players, like this Labor staffer. Do all the hard work, all the argy bargy. Undercover. Under, undercover, undercover, exactly. Undercover sums it up perfectly. Yeah. You don't get any acknowledgement. <laughs> when the politicians and the media can't think of anything new to film, they film themselves, even inside their little bubble called the campaign bus. Oh no, they let anybody on this they bus, do. don't they? I got assured they'd only brought the responsible journalists. Parties love this stuff because it distracts everyone from the serious issues of the day. But to me, it shows how the media have become political prisoners, easily manipulated by the party machines. Take last weekend, for example. This is one of the really big campaign events. It's the first face-to-face -face meeting between Julia Gillard and Kevin Rudd. We tried to get into this building to film it. We weren't allowed. In fact, the Labor Party has just picked a couple of cameras to do the filming. Most of the media have been excluded, and certainly the Australian public have been excluded from this meeting behind closed doors. This is not real campaigning, this is not the real Julia Gillard, it's a sham. On to the question of what happens with Cairns Base Hospital. Inside, Gillard and former leader turned leaker Rudd tried to be friends, while outside the journalists were driven to the other side of town. <laughs> so much of modern politics is a performance, Hollywood style acting, but this one didn't work. Where were you guys? That's the question I'd like to ask. What do you make of that? <laughs> no, 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 my turn. You've asked some questions, my turn now. What, what did you think of the fact that... I thought it was uh, absolutely ludicrous, ridiculous. And where were you physically at the time? We when? were at Scarborough down the road there. So you were... Trapped yeah, it's a, bit, it's a really, um, it's a really sort of strange evolution of, of um, the way campaigns are run. Would you describe it as real campaigning? No, no, I don't think it is. A real campaign is at least making yourself open to the possibility that a real person might come up and talk to you. After the Rudd meeting, Gillard was reunited with the media pack, so that a new set of happy, completely contrived photo opportunities could continue. Oh yes, I was in Cairns just a few days ago. But at the Brisbane show, I became part of the show. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Julia! Hello, Long Mark, time how are no you? See. I'd heard the Labor Party didn't want me on the campaign trial. So I asked the Prime Minister about it, about anything. So if you want to make complaints, you really should make them about Rudd, who's the one who's sabotaging your campaign. It wasn't my intention to steal Rudd's thunder, but my encounter with Gillard set off a storm of protest. Nice to see you, and I hope you enjoy your life as a journalist now. Well, I've always thought the role of the reporter was to ask the questions on the spot. But the politicians these days, they never answer them. So the media have to look elsewhere for the news through sensationalism and beat-ups. Uh, there was an ugly incident yesterday with Julia Gillard. Back in his TV studio, Laurie Oakes led the charge of sanctimonious journalists. Uh, he's not a journalist. Uh, he's still full of bile and settling old scores. Most of my critics weren't even there, but it didn't stop their second-hand commentary. This is what I call absentee journalism. On Sky News, I tried to put my side of the story. When you saw the front page the next day that calls it the handshake from hell, when you see the reaction, what did you think? Did you regret it? Because, I mean, the, the Prime Minister seemed, frankly, offended by it in the end. Well, that's a nonsense. That's an absolute nonsense. The, the, the media, they're desperate for a front page headline. Sensationalism, see me there. So they fit me into the story. They think it's going to happen, irrespective of what actually does happen. Uh, I didn't swear at her. I didn't raise my voice. Uh, the physicality of it was all on her side. <laughs> And, um, you know, she gave me an answer that, uh, true to form, was a non-answer. Of course, this election is not just defined by the squabbles in the Labor Party. The Liberals have to convince Australia its candidate is up to the job. And that involves spin that would make Warney proud. Tony Abbott's only ever believed in three things. 
God, the monarchy and work choices. Now he's got a campaign launch without the third one. He's not being fair dinkum. Did you ever expect to come to a Liberal launch where they were supporting paid parental leave but not industrial relations reform? Well, I knew that it was always going to be a soft spot because the unions will rip into us at any, they'll run a scare campaign, a scare campaign on anything. So it, I thought obviously you have to tread carefully. So. G'day, how are you going? A few days after the party's campaign launch in Brisbane, I caught up with Tony Abbott in Western Sydney. Now Tony, long time no see. It is a long time now mate. Are you brave enough to shake my hand? <laughs> I'm happy to shake your hand mate. You seem happier to see me than the Prime Minister. No, no, no worries, you won't end mate. up in hospital. But... <laughs> uh, he was even prepared to take a question without notice. I was encouraged at the start of the campaign when you and your spokesperson Scott Morrison said that you'd be slashing the migration program. But then it's turned out that you've just got the same target as the Gillard government. What well, about what? a real policy, a fair income policy yeah. that gets the level of uh, migration back off, to where it was, 100,000? Well, what is the Gillard's, Gillard government's target? Hey. That's the point. I think it's very important for her to say what her number is. Well, I think people in Western Sydney, you're the alternative Prime yeah. Minister, they want you to set a number and, 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 and have a policy. 170,000 is the maximum. Western Sydney is where I live. It's tough-minded and aspirational. And immigration is one of the big issues, along with asylum seekers and interest rates. This election will be won and lost in the marginal seats right here and in Queensland. How about school today? What did you do at school today? But Renee and Jamie Mannering see another issue, an even bigger problem for our democracy, distrust and disillusionment. I think more now it's not so much about who can do best for your country, Who's going to do the least damage? Is there anything in the campaign that's positive and worthwhile for you? I haven't seen anything positive, personally. Yeah, there's not much that has actually been promised that would really affect ourselves or our family as such. There's not much out there at all. Tony Abbott will hurt Australian families by pulling the plug on vital health and education services. It's not hard to understand why the Mannerings are skeptical, because at this stage of the campaign, all we ever see on TV is negative advertising. And that's another tactic designed to manipulate the voters. Nothing's changed. It's the same Julia. It's the same Labor. What are the particular techniques they use in these ads to demonise the other side? Well, we're getting... We're getting black and white photography or sepia tone photography. We're getting horror movie music, you know, the low one single note <laughs> carrying through. We're getting scary noises like door slamming at to highlight key points. More labour, more waste, more debt, more taxes. They said this, boom. Don't let Tony Abbott take us backwards. It's Alfred Hitchcock, 101. When you look at the ads close up with advertising guru Rob Bell Giovanni, you notice the Labor and Liberal ads are almost identical. At the petrol pump, on your power bills. So it's difficult to take it seriously. They're just having a go at each other instead of telling us what significant difference they're going to make. So even in the world of advertising, this is seen as pretty low-grade stuff. It is low-grade stuff. So this is really a race to the bottom. <laughs> to some degree, yes. <laughs> to some degree, it is. Labor and Liberal think playing it safe is the only way to achieve electoral success. Follow the focus groups and never say what you really believe in. And then it struck me. There was a politician only a few years back who did speak her mind and had the courage of her convictions. Not everyone, including me, agreed, but so many Australians did. Hi Pauline. Hello Mark. Nice to meet you. Yes. Very nice Probably indeed. Yes. So, yes. I never Absolutely. thought I'd be in the same I room as Pauline Hanson, uh, let alone interviewing her. But I've got to say, it's been an unusual week. So Pauline, you were the most famous redhead in Australian <laughs> politics. What do you think of the, the new one? <laughs> well, on behalf of the Australian people, I'm asking for a please explain. Why is Julia Gillard leading the Labor Party into this election as Prime Minister and not Kevin Rudd. So do you see Gillard as a backstabber? I don't like her and I don't trust her. That's fair enough. Do you think Tony Abbott is any better? I will never forgive or forget what Tony Abbott did to me. Mm. 
He was he organised the slush fund against me, which saw my imprisonment. In this election campaign, do you see much difference between Labor and Liberal? It's become a popularity contest. They're not out there amongst the public and talking to the public. They need to wake up to themselves. When it comes to good ideas for Australia's future, Gillard and Abbott have given the voters a blank piece of paper. I say let's give them a blank piece of paper in return. They say voting is compulsory in Australia, but it's not compulsory to fill out the ballot paper. You can put it straight into the ballot box, totally blank. That's what I'll be doing on Saturday, and I urge you to do the same. It's the ultimate protest vote. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.